Hi there, welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine. I have a flip through today of a journal I recently finished. It is, uh, it was created from uh, what was originally uh, a children's arithmetic book. Looks like it must have been grade four because this was one of the owner's signatures um, at some point. <laughs> I suspect, just from what I know, uh, have come to learn about old books. I do think that this was probably uh, 1940s, 1950s. Um, and like I said, I, I it was an arithmetic book. The spine was falling apart and the uh, text block was actually gone. Uh, all I had was the cover to go on. Um, I found it in a recycling bin at my little church book sale <laughs> and I just thought it still had so much character. I loved this warm brown color to it. I love that somebody along the way had put a sticker over top that said chocolate mocha. Um, over the top chocolate mocha and then it must have also been here at some point. And I just loved that because I imagined that maybe this little arithmetic book um, had big dreams of becoming a cookbook someday. So in a way, I sort of made it happen. It's still very much a writer's journal. You're going to see when we get into it that there's just tons and tons of space for writing in it. But I did take a little bit of uh, liberty to add in a few like dessert kind of goodies. Uh, I sort of took a, a, little, a little tip of the hat to chocolate mocha and then added in a few more desserts from there. So uh, this book, let's measure it because I forget, it's five and a half by seven and a quarter, and it's a big book. It's, this is, you'll see there, <laughs> this is a big book. It has a two inch spine. So it's a good size book. I recreated a new spine for it, brand new. Uh, well, not brand new. It's new to the book. I use all repurposed materials. When I create my journals, um, everything as much as possible is from secondhand repurposed sources. And so in this case for chocolate mocha, uh, the only new thing in it really is this little uh, bulldog clip, this rusty little bulldog clip. I made it look old, but it actually is brand new. Everything else, all these twines, laces, the fabric here, um, everything else is um, repurposed. So certainly my tools that I work with, my glues and that, they have to be new. They need to be fresh in order to be, uh, to work well um, and also, you know, be modern and up-to-date, acid-free sort of thing. So rest assured, um, if you consider this a junk journal, which I do, uh, it's definitely made from someone else's junk, and I think it's a treasure. <laughs> so let me tell you what we've done here. This sweet journal has nine signatures that I've hand sewn into a hidden hollow back spine, as you can see here. That means that it's actually not attached in there, and it means that this book will lay open uh, better. Hold on here. We'll get to this when we get to this. It lays open nicely when you want to write in it. Now that said, in order to write in it, because it's a big book, I have created a journaling board for it. This is a hard board made from chipboard. And what you can do is you slide it under the page that you're going to be writing on and it gives you a hard surface. And you can move it anywhere you want in the book. And since it has lace on the edge, it just gives a pretty little look to the edge without um, bulking up the edge of your paper. So I've just, I've put some chocolate cookies and a cup of tea with a biscuit. This is an ad from a 1957 newspaper from Nova Scotia, Canada. And here is uh, some pictures out of some vintage cookbooks. And then as a little um, tip of the hat back to its former life of being an arithmetic book, this page actually is from a 1950s children's arithmetic book. And I've used this little edging 
uh, in a few other places in the book, you'll see. I'm going to put this aside for now and we can do a little flip through of the book. I've used a lot of um, illustrations from a beautiful uh, book I have called the Victorian Book of Cakes and it has old uh, illustrations in it of Victorian um, sweets and delicacies and petty fours and uh, it's it's they're just beautiful beautiful illustrations. I've made end papers out of two of the illustrations from this book. This is a trifle and this is a Charlotte Ecossais and then I have made tabs for every single signature. As I said, there are nine signatures uh, from the page that had illustrations of pedophores. And they had n n numbered, pardon me, they had numbered each pedophore so that you could find out more about them. So I left the numbers on so that your book here is almost like it has chapter headings, which I think is sweet. This is from a 1950s uh, Dick, and Dan Dick and Jane type reader and it's just a mom serving out a chocolate cake and on the page that was one of the words from the page it said I like cake and I thought well that's quite appropriate. The front page here is taken from a reprint of a very old cookbook that was called Miss Parloa's new cookbook but it actually was an old cookbook. <laughs> I created a pocket here right in the front from an old uh, recipe book. A cookbook and in it I tucked a few things. I tucked a coupon uh, for the old uh, vintage Five Roses cookbooks that you used to be able to get here in Canada. Uh, somebody's recipe for date squares. I don't know whose it is. Uh, I, I buy up old recipe tins at thrift stores and sometimes I'm lucky and they're full of somebody's recipes. So if you're brave and you feel like it, you can give that a try. And then there's just a blank tag here for journaling on. Here's another place where I've put some of the uh, arithmetic from the 1950s arithmetic book. A little flip out. Here again, I've used one of the petty fours from the page of illustrations from the Victorian Book of Cakes. And it's a flip out. Lots of room for journaling a page from a cookbook and this sewing throughout I've left the threads long if you don't enjoy that you can trim them off the papers that are tea dyed I did them myself but not all of the papers are tea dyed this paper is old enough that that yellowing is actually natural so I like to leave it be Here's a little tuck spot made from some sewing and I put in a tag that's from a vintage recipe book that was by uh, made by the Hershey's Cocoa Company and then a little bit of tea dyed paper for journaling on and then I had this um, fussy cut out of a book from way back I, I, I fussy cut so much now it's hard to say what book I fussy cut this out of but I thought this was the perfect book for it because it says recipes and I thought that's perfect for a tuck spot. Here's another tuck spot that I have created from the same cookbook cover that this came from. And I tucked in a few things. I like these kind of tuck spots because this is still open. Um, this is just the divider from one of those recipe card tins that I told you I look for when I'm out thrifting. And then this is a tag that I created from a 1940s. Uh, it's a British magazine that I have called Women's Journal. And it's just uh, an advertisement for uh, Melty's Chocolate Caramels. So I tucked those in there. I thought uh, that makes a great journaling spot and I created a journaling spot on the back there. And of course the pettifor here is um, Pressburg's number two and it's the second uh, signature. Here's another flip out. This is a card from um, that you would print your own um, 
table places for at wedding receptions and I found a whole box of them at one of my thrift shops once so I tea dyed it and I think it's they're fun to have in and there's another one of the pedophores that were on that page so I tucked that in behind like a little surprise and just keeps flipping out for journaling space here's a full page from the other arithmetic book that I used to put in here just as a little reminder that this cover actually at one point, at some point, children were using it to learn arithmetic in. And now it'll have a whole new life. Um, being whatever the new owner wants it to be, it doesn't necessarily have to be for cooking. It could just be someone who loves cooking, but they want to write in a journal about their, their life and times or memories. Who knows? The opportunities are, are boundless. The other side of that... Um, Vintage arithmetic book. Another clip out here. And here we are with uh, Pettifor number three, Cherry Strips. I love the green with the chocolate brown ink. So, a little sewing here and there. This is from a 1940s uh, cookbook, the Purity Cookbook. So, it's a page uh, from the dessert section. A little fussy cut of an old cook stove on some blank music paper that I tea dyed. Some music theory exam paper. This is a page from a reprint of a Sears Roebuck catalog and it's from the spices and baking goods uh, section. This is a little card again from one of my thrifting adventures and it actually has, a, it's for writing a note in, but it also has a recipe on the back for upside down apple gingerbread. Now these, this card is uh, great because you can see here it's actually been folded so you can leave it as is or you can slice these ends open just use a sharp knife or scissors and that will give you four more pages for journaling or you can use a little strip of glue across the tops of each one and it would become um, a little tuck spot pocket or you could do one of both you can open this side up and make this side into pocket i left it be i left it up to you Signature number four, ginger cakes. And you can see on the back here, I left them as is. You can tell that they were cut out of a book. I like when a journal made from someone else's junk actually looks like it and has the character of its former life. Another little pedophore down here, a little cookie maybe. Some more of that arithmetic book. It's not, this is not the arithmetic book that this cover was from. As I said, I only had the cover to go on. So I've imagined the possibilities. <laughs> Here's a little tuck spot that I made from an old envelope. And inside I've put just a couple of little tags that you could journal on. But these could go anywhere in the book. They don't need to go in there. And then this is also a little tuck spot, this coconut tartlet. You can uh, tuck, you can flip the little end of the envelope in there and keep it closed. And then I've added a few little things in here. There's a little doily. This is a card from a really old uh, card game that was produced in the UK for a company called Cowan Gate. They made baby formula. And uh, this is quite old. And so I put Mrs. Cheerful, the cheerful mother, <laughs> in there. A recipe card and uh, some tea dyed paper so i just tucked those in there you can put whatever you like back there a little tea dyed doily these pages are from anne of green gables and it's from the chapter anne is invited out to tea and then also a tempest in the school teapot and then i have a little fussy cut down here of a teapot and a cup of tea because it's always nice to have a little cake with your tea You'll see that the pages are all different shapes and sizes. I think that gives it character and variety. So here we are, signature number five, Madeline's. I think that's pretty. This is an actual page out of the Victorian Book of Cakes. 
So it's got actually a recipe for walnut ghetto. This is also from, I believe, the Purity Cookbook as well. I loved that picture, so I included that in there. Here's another uh, recipe file divider for D, I figured desserts. I used some fabric to sew it on so that it could be a flip out. And I, I sewed that myself by hand and just glued it on with some pretty fabric. This is from a, an old vintage uh, school composition book. This is the center from a guest book that I tea dyed. And then here's a, a doily. You can't have sweet little pedophores without doilies. I remember when my mother's ladies group would come over for lunches and it was absolutely magical. All the cookies and sweets and the doilies and teacups was wonderful. Um, drinks and beverages and then there were more desserts over here. Coffee fluff. Here's another page out of Victorian Book of Cakes. And of course, this is signature number six. Uh, they were called Englanders. Another, uh, another page out of a recipe book with some dessert recipes. Blank music paper that's been tea dyed. Here I've made a journaling card. Here's the bulldog clip that I explained already. It looks old. It's actually, it was purchased new and I made it look old. Uh, this is some more from the arithmetic book. This is from a funny book that I found on one of my thrifting hauls. And it was actually the reprints from an artist in the 1800s. And he was commissioned to make some paintings for um, a, an exhibit of what he imagined life in the year 2000 would be. And he imagined that this would be a model kitchen for the year 2000. So I included that because you usually make your goodies in the kitchen. Signature number seven, uh, Viennese strips. This is another page from the same cookbook that I created the front page from, Miss Parloa's new cookbook. Here's a flip out here, and I've also included another recipe card that was found in a recipe box from a thrift store, and it, somebody took the time to save magic cookie bars from um, Eagle Brand Milk. And actually, I make those quite often at Christmas time, and we, our family loves them. <laughs> they're delicious, and they're so easy. This was an invitation. I turned it into a pocket and I put a little tag in there. This tag actually was from in some from some happy mail from a friend. Thanks, Tammy. And then I did a little bit of collaging down here because it still had the mark from the printer down here. And I don't I don't think it looked pretty. So I did a little bit of collaging, but there's still room for journaling. And then of course there's room for you to tuck whatever you like in there. Signature number eight, Turks Caps. Here's a little tuck spot. I made uh, a page from another cookbook and the sheet was too big, so, but instead of cutting it and trimming it to fit, I folded it up so that it created a flip out and that it also created its own pocket. I've added another one of the little uh, pedophores from the Victorian Book of Cakes. And then I've tucked a few little things in. There's some tags in here that you could journal on. And then there's a vintage uh, card. It looks like it's from sort of an old maid type game. Again, this was in some happy mail that came to me and it made me happy. And now it's going to make the new owner happy. And there's Annie the cook. Again, these threads, if you don't like long threads, trim them off. More from the Sears Roebuck catalog. Here's a little envelope that I sewed right into the signature. And then inside, I put in a journaling card that I created from an illustration that was in a Crabtree and Evelyn cookbook that I have for walnut wafers.
here's a tag that I created. The back of the tag is from the uh, Victorian Book of Cakes. I collaged, or not collaged, I decoupaged a napkin over top and put a little label here. You can write whatever you like on it. And then there's some journaling space on the back for you. And then another uh, Crazy Eights kind of uh, vintage card, and it's uh, Baker Benny. And he's holding a cake, and I like that the little mouse up there is also displaying his beautiful cake. And then again, another pedophore down here, decorated sponge, fancy. Here's signature number nine, almond slices. And again, another page that was taken right out of the Victorian book of cakes. Oh, there's a thread there. So there's a total of 252 pages in this book. So it's a big journal and so much journaling space. You, As you've seen, a lot of blank pages ready for you to fill with what you wish. This is actually a recipe card. I love that it says, <laughs> I love this recipe, and I've left it blank. There's a little, a little envelope down here that is also a tuck spot. I've only glued it in along two sides, and it has the petty fours for cream baskets. And then it also has a bookmark in here that I always go into one of my journals. Uh, I call it a two nanas bookmark because it has uh, my mother who's a nana and my nana. So that fits in there just nicely, but you can put it wherever you like. I just happen to tuck it there. And then on the back here, I made one last pocket from that recipe book. And in it, I tucked another journaling card that I created from the Victorian book of cakes. Both sides you can see there. But I made some journaling space on the back and there's an illustration here from the Crabtree and Avalon book and you can see that that's Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. That's a take from a famous uh, old master's painting by Gainsborough that he did called Mr. and Mrs. Andrews. Um, but that's them eating, enjoying some Crabtree and Evelyn cookies. <laughs> And then there's a blank recipe card here that, again, I received in some happy mail. And uh, there's some cakes here. I thought that rather looked like a chocolate mousse. And I left this blank, so if you wanted to use it as uh, like an ex libris, you could. So that is um, chocolate mocha. A, a chunky little, a chunky little book. Not so little. <laughs> nice size. You can see it's uh, lots of pages in there. It's uh, very pretty. I love how all these petty fours turned out along the edge. I just think that's so charming. And it was fun to do that. Now let me t tuck this little journaling card back in so that you can see. Oh, you need to go right in. Sorry. There you go. So that you can see how pretty it looks with the lace. Let me lift this up. You can see it better. There we go. That lace just shows off so pretty. So if you're seeing this video right now, um, this journal will be available for purchase in my Etsy shop if you're interested. The link will be down below and you can go over and take a look. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. Take care.